Hey guys, Dave from Timber Time Outdoors. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. In this video, I've got two things for you. Number one, we're gonna work on a sawmill. I've got a very special story about the logs we acquired and that sawmill. And number two, I'm gonna talk about sawmills and should you buy one and the reasons why or the reasons why not. So stay with us guys and keep it in the timber. Hey now, take a step outside and seize the day. All right, guys, let's get to it. So, sawmill. Just a quick shout out to my friend Jerry who uh, donated his time and his sawmill so we could preserve the history um, that's you know basically baked into these logs. Um, special story with those logs. But Jerry, thank you so much. I know you were camera shy. You're not featured in the video, even though you were kind of working on things in the background. Just wanted to say thank you. And guys, everybody, Jerry is one of those guys that uh, will give you the shirt off his back. All right, so what's so special about these logs? Well, these logs are very big and very old. All right, so they are basically white pine, 30 inches in diameter. And so I, I wanted to find out how old they were. Um, so there's a formula on the internet, basically says you take the diameter times five. And so 30 inch diameter log times five is a 150 year old tree. Um, so very special in that regard, basically a ton of history um, that we can preserve if we you know, save this material. And the other thing is how we acquired these logs. Um, kind of a crazy story. So um, the land that was purchased uh, for deer hunting uh, had this log on it and was laying on the ground. And the story why that log was still there, it's a very valuable log, why it was still there was um, it was logged five years prior to me acquiring the log. Um, the logger was actually arrested and all his equipment liquidated and the previous owner had to sell the property because he didn't get paid from all the material that was logged off. Um, just a nightmare for that uh, individual, but you know, I guess his loss is our gain. So as we were scouting for, um, you know, hunting spots, we came across this enormous white pine log. Um, I don't even know how long it was. It had to be 40 feet, 50 feet long. Um, and like I said, uh, most of it is 30 to 28 inches in diameter. Uh, it was a, a little bit decayed around the, uh, around the bark, so all the bark had fallen off. Um, and maybe we lost about an inch um, of that, you know, material that is out towards the bark. But uh, the core of the log was um, in great shape. And so, um, you know, I just felt like I had to save this wood. And uh, so I cut it up. I didn't know what to do with it. And then, of course, my buddy Jerry had the sawmill and the rest is history from there. All right. Sawmills. Super fun. Um, should you buy one? And what does that entail? Let's just talk about it. So I got a few things that I observed. This is the first time I've ever used a sawmill. And I was just a helper, brought the logs. And I had some key takeaways that I wanna share with you. So you might be thinking about buying a sawmill. Here's some things to think about. So number one, if you're gonna buy a sawmill, you have to have access to material. Kind of stating the obvious, right? But if you can't get logs that are straight and big, uh, a sawmill might not be worth the money for you. Okay, these things are expensive, 8,000 and up. And uh, they're, um, you know, it's a significant investment. So you better have access to good logs. You can buy logs, um, preferably, you know, have access to them on your property. So that's number one. Okay, number two, you gotta think about what are you gonna do with this wood, okay? Again, maybe stating the obvious, but you're either gonna sell it or you're gonna use it for woodworking in some fashion, whether it's finished material for a building, uh, maybe your cabinet maker, those kinds of things. So. You know, $8,000 investment, you might want to have a little bit of a business plan to pay back. You know, I know a lot of times you buy equipment just for fun. Well, that might be it too. Um, maybe you're going to give away the wood. I don't know. But you got to have a plan for the wood and some sort of a, you know, payback to, to justify the machine. All right, number three. In order to have a sawmill, you got to have some space, all right? You need a place to keep it. Um, you need a, you know, kind of a work area around it. So you're probably going to have some equipment um, that's loading the logs. Um, you might want to have something that covers the equipment. You know, it's $8,000 investment. You want to keep it covered from the weather. And the other thing is you got to have a place to dry this lumber and it adds up very quickly. So, you know, we did three logs. No, we did two logs. Two logs. Um, I have three more. We did two logs and it was an enormous pile of lumber. And uh, so you need a nice place to dry. It doesn't have to be indoors. You know, this will dry outside, but indoors is a little bit better. Um, but keep that in mind. So you need space for the machine. You need space 
to work around it and you need space to dry the wood. All right, let's talk about number four. Number four is you've got to have some support. So what do I mean by support? Equipment and people, all right? It's not really a one-man operation. It can be done, but really you need two to three people to run a sawmill, efficiently anyway. Um, and the other thing is equipment, all right? So, yep, there's manual ways to load logs. Um, it can be done, but preferably a skid steer, a bobcat, or maybe a walk-behind um, type of, you know, bobcat machine or skid steer. Um, you need something to lift those logs. They're very heavy. Get them positioned. You've got to flip them over, that kind of thing. So uh, it can be kind of a family affair, right? You can get your family involved in this. Uh, we had several people um, doing it for these white pine logs, and it was, it was really fun. And then lastly, number five is, like I said, it's fun as heck. Um, you know, it took us a long time. It was a hard work. It was a hot day that we did this, and uh, um, I just had a great time. I learned a lot. Um, obviously, we've got some incredible lumber that we're going to use to finish off our man cave or our new hunting cabin that's being built. And so I um, just want to mention that, that, you know, that's kind of this intangible, that fun factor um, that you get from a sawmill is pretty cool, I got to say. Um, I immediately wanted to buy one after the day of using it, then starting to think about it. You know, the wood that I have access to, it's pretty crooked for the most part. Um, I primarily cut trees that are already dead. Um, we have oak wilt and so there's plenty of dead ones to pick from. I don't want to cut down new, you know, live trees if I don't have to. And so for me, I don't know that I have the right materials uh, for it. I would do have the tractor and we definitely have a space for it, but I'm not sure I will buy one, but definitely think about it. And there's a lot of products out there that, that do a great job with it. So, all right guys, let's wrap this video up. Just a great day um, working on the logs. Um, learned a lot, got some great material for our um, new hunting cabin that we're be, being built, Hope future videos on that. Um, hopefully you learned something about sawmills a little bit. Uh, obviously you're gonna wanna do more research than I'm giving you here, cause I'm a newbie as well. But uh, those are my observations. And again, um, you know, hopefully you learned something. If you did, please hit that like button, share with your friends. Um, Thanks for moving with us, guys, and remember, everybody, keep it in the timber. Bye-bye.